quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. Joplifter was one of the greatest games ever made for the Apple II. It was released by Broderbund Software in 1982. You take on the role of a helicopter pilot flying across enemy lines to rescue hostages held by evil revolutionaries armed with tanks and jets determined to stop you at all costs. For some reason, after rescuing the hostages, you drop them off at a U.S. post office. Maybe so they can mail themselves home? Just go with it, it was 1982. What's all this have to do with the typewriter? Let's find out, but first, get to the chopper. Howdy folks, and welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. We don't normally start our reviews out by staring at a case of a machine, but we've never had a case that had a helicopter on it before. <laughs> and we think that's really special. And as Kevin said in his introduction, Helicopters have something of a sweet spot in my heart because I really enjoyed playing Broderbund Software's Choplifter by Dan Gorlin back when designers could put their names on their creations in 1982 on our Apple II uh, personal computer. Many times uh, did I fly over that fence and try to rescue those little, uh, little white characters uh, being picked up as hostages, and I guess it speaks to the zeitgeist of that era, 1982, because of course we had just recently suffered the indignity of having our embassy overrun by terrorists, so-called students, uh, supported by the uh, Islamic regime in Iran, who had taken over our embassy and held our hostages there for 444 days until Ronald Reagan came into office and on his inauguration day they were released all 52 hostages and that was a huge transformative event so as a young preteen playing choplifter where the mission was to rescue hostages from behind enemy lines and what looked like a desert landscape in our VGA monitors and playing with two little tiny joysticks going back and forth trying to control that very unstable helicopter was quite an adventure but let's leave that adventure behind for the computer game reviews and let's switch over and look at our new Sears Citation, which came out 18 years before Choplifter in 1964. And here it is, the Sears Citation. Let's take a look at this blush, champagne blush is what I'm calling it. Also red would work. Uh, modified Model 6 Series Smith Corona machine built specifically for Sears. And again, it was only available for one year, the fall of 1964 until the fall of 65. A really pretty, wonderful machine um, with all the new modern styling that had come to replace the Model 5 machines, but with a custom Sears twist. So let's go over some of the features uh, right now. Let's start with one of the most obvious, and that's, it has this interesting uh, tension select lever right here with a nice big red ball. Some of the Sears Citation models, and we've made a quick review of them in our Great White Typewriters uh, video. Check that one out for a Lego shark swimming endlessly. But um, it had a blue ball, and this one has a red ball, which is uh, kind of interesting, kind of minority reportish, I guess. Uh, this leatherette backing is an interesting piece to stylistically. Uh, it often comes off. We've had to re-glue that. Um, the major stylistic element on this is a little bit of Googie style, if you will, if you look at our Jetsons video. We have a very angular ribbon cover on a top of this machine. We have one very large button on the front, which is your tab clear and set. On the old 5 Series, these were two separate buttons, uh, very much smaller. Now we've got a massive, easy touch one. Uh, we have the white keys, but we don't we haven't yet picked up the change of type keys or the changeable keys of the uh, later 6 Series. We have a manual ribbon reverse still on the front of the machine. That's what this little lever here is for. That goes away a little bit later in the later 6 Series models. And we have our platen knobs over here. They're much larger and white. We've got a little bit of a crack in this one, maybe. Uh, so it goes. And we have the plastic, however, ribbon carriage release levers, which is a, an innovation that many of us are sad about because these things are somewhat fragile, only lasting 50 or 60 years, as opposed to the five they were designed to last. And that's shown by this one here, 
We'll scoot back just a little bit. This is very common to have to have to repair these, and you're kind of faced with a dilemma when these carriage release levers break. You can either cut them off and then melt uh, melt a new hole into them. You can try to 3D print them, or you can use really strong epoxy, as I have here, to hope that the um, repair holds. And I think that it will. It's pretty strong epoxy. Uh, but that's pretty much all you can do on these sort of temporary um, things to... Uh, to fix what is supposed to be a temporary typewriter and which has lasted 10 times beyond its designed service life. All right, so speaking of service life, let's take a look at its features. Um, it's a fully featured machine. We have a dedicated number one exclamation mark and a plus equals. The eight still has the asterisk over it um, as many of them did for a long time. We still have our fractions. We can always send email because we have the at and the sent which is ever so useful nowadays. Uh, pop in the top. Let's go ahead and look at that. You just have a real simple pull to lift off. You've got standard two-inch ribbon spools. You use the basket shift, so very lightweight shifting. Um, you have your ribbon reverse forks right here, so you'll have a grommet, which is, triggers your uh, ribbon reverse as the machine is typing, and it will go this way or that way. Sears always put its own somewhat inscrutable model numbers on things. So this is model 871.1440. It's PICA, which is always nice to be confirmed. Uh, and then they have this wonderful deliver to any Sears retail or mail order store for service. Um, good luck doing that. I wonder how many people actually did that. And I would love to hear a comment from anyone who's watching this video if they themselves or anyone you knew ever took a typewriter into Sears for servicing. I guess that reminds me Sears used to have phenomenal warranties on its products, in particular its tools. So uh, we used to always splurge and buy Craftsman tools, and I distinctly remember uh, knowing that you could return them if they ever broke, which was almost too good to be true. But I don't think we ever had one break except for maybe a screwdriver one time in the middle 80s. And we went into Sears, and we walked right up, and we turned it in, and they gave us a nice brand new Craftsman screwdriver. Now, the Craftsman line is still made, I believe, but the name has been sold to China. And I think they're sold through um, through Home Depot now. But the Sears Citation is definitely not sold through Home Depot. It's sold only by individual collectors. So continuing on around with the feature set, just to round that out and be consistent, we have a pop-up paper support. We have press-to-slide margins. Uh, we know this is PICA because it only goes up to 85, roughly, or really 90 if you go to the full length of the platen. If it went up to 90 or 100, you'd know that would be an elite one of our telltales. We have a paper bale heel here with these little rollers, which are little rubber rollers, which do a good job. A little handhold to grab hold of that. This lever here releases the tension on your paper roller, so if you're putting paper in and it's crooked, you can release the tension and then adjust it, and you'll be good to go. On the left-hand side, we have our line select one, two, and three. I don't know why you really, they hung around with three spacing, triple spacing. There must have been a reason. Uh, later variants, we end up with one, one and a half, and two, which I find to be much more realistic when it comes to using paper. But I guess paper was cheaper then, and you could triple space it, or maybe it was designed for kids trying to turn in essays for college, and they knew they had to have a 10-page paper, but they didn't specify the line spacing, so let's give it to them in triple space. <laughs> All right, maybe. Uh, the name is here, Sears logo in a box, and then citation and a really nice script. Just all in all, a wonderful typewriter. So what color is this typewriter, do you figure? Well, it's a little different, perhaps, depending on how the light hits it and how I shine my overhead lighting. Um, it's I would call it a blush champagne. It's very pretty. The red down here on the space bar is almost kind of a terracotta, but not quite that color. Um, but I, it's an interesting. I think it's very pretty as is. But... I think it was even prettier when it was brand new because here's some hints of what the full color looks like under the ribbon. It's much more of a salmon or a darker red where it's been protected from the solar radiation and fading. That, that was much more uh, dramatic in the color. But like all things, some things get better with age even if they turn a little bit gray. Having just celebrated a birthday, that's my new mantra. Uh, we have a ribbon color selector here on the right, and that's uh, blue, white, and red. And, of course, that's the bottom uh, the stencil position and then the top position. You can put any color ribbon you want to um, in this machine. And over here on the left, if you pull this little knob out, 
That allows your platen to freewheel. That's great for if you need to line your typing up on a form or some other area on a page and you don't really worry about returning to a specific uh, line that you had. Um, you can also do that with this lever here on the front, which also makes it freewheel. And last but not least, I often gloss over this one, but you have what's called a page gauge here. So as you see, you turn, what you do is before you put your paper in, you would set this to number 11 under your set. Then you would feed paper in and it will count down how much paper you have left until you run out. That's a super nifty feature. All right, let's get set up for a typing test and continue on. And feeding the paper in. We have our paper guide here on the left. We'll just get it started. Sometimes with machines like this, you have to help it. Like if you just uh, set your paper in like this, well, it's grabbing it every time, but sometimes you just have to push it down a little bit to get it started. If you're new to typewriters, don't be alarmed if that's what happens. All right, let's go ahead and start typing. Zoom in a little bit. See if you guys can see that pretty well. There we go. Our fathers. So just the beginning of the Gettysburg Address. Like so many Smith Corona typewriters, the typing touch on this is just really good. It's just really smooth, it's comfortable, um, and it's easy to use. This one has a brand new ribbon, so it's a little bit smudgy perhaps, maybe just a hair, but it's really nice dark imprint as you can see. And this is a Pica typeface. You can see I had one little typo right here, or the fourth, brought forth. F, the O and the F were switched or somehow. Sometimes when you're typing a little bit fast, you can make those mistakes uh, inadvertently with how you press the keys. And that's just the joy of a manual typewriter. Um, but uh, really easy to type with, real simple, real straightforward. Just a really um, wonderful machine. I'm going to bring out a Citation 2 that we have. So you can kind of have a comparison between what evolved between the Citation here and the Citation 2. All right, so we have brought out the a couple years newer Citation 2. It's interesting to see what has remained. So, of course, we have the same angular Googie style um, ribbon cover. We have a slightly different and I think improved black um, backsplash here. We have that blue button I mentioned, which I love. It's a translucent blue. It's very shiny. Same thing for the ribbon touch selector. And we have the Sears logo in the box. And then we have a very fancy C. I don't even know what you call, you call something. Calligraphy C, we'll just call it. With kind of an old world script uh, here. Very early 1960s, early 1970s, late 1960s styling. But we've picked up a couple extra features. So these red keys here are your changeable type, a Sears official name for them, versus change a type. And you have just one on this one. But you do have a really nifty feature over here. You have a paragraph key, which indents five spaces. You have the same set and clear. We have the same shell, which really benefits from this wonderfully wide space bar, which is one of the most comfortable space bars of any typewriter you'll ever use. I just love that feature of these Sears citations. They did such a great job with them. Um, and that's, let's see. Oh, yeah, one other moment we've done is now we have also picked up the one, one and a half, and two line spacing and foregone the one, two, and three. So as far as typewriters go, the Citation to the Citation 2 is a really nice development. Um, they're wonderful machines. I love the, the Citation 2 just as much as I love the Citation. Uh, I do appreciate the, having the uh, changeable type option and the paragraph key is fun. But pretty much it's the same typewriter uh, with just those few margin, uh, marginal differences that we mentioned. And both of these are pretty limited production. And certainly the Citation being produced for only one year is an extremely uncommon machine. Uh, and the red one is, I think, the most uncommon of the citations because I've, there's, there's none of them on the typewriter database until I get this one posted. Uh, and it's just a real treat to, uh, to, to get this. So just try to do a quick rundown on our uh, pros and cons, and we'll be right back to conclude. All right, just wrapping up our pros and cons of typewriter that we really like. The pros, it's a limited edition and it's collectible, and when you're collecting typewriters or even just collecting a single one, it's fun to have one that's kind of a little less common. And um, I love that. I particularly love any rebranded, especially Sears rebrands of Smith Coronas, uh, formerly called Tower but uh, with that brand. But I love these. They just seem to always enhance the Smith Corona baseline offerings by just a little bit. 
uh, more practical functionality. Uh, it has a fully featured keyboard. I like having a dedicated number one, uh, and the plus and equals is also nice to have. Uh, most importantly for me, functionality-wise, is it has such a comfortable space bar. I am somebody who often misses spaces if you see me typing because I don't, uh, I guess, strike the space bar hard enough, and maybe that's because I don't want to injure my poor, soft little thumb. But with a big, fat, wide space bar like this, I don't have any issues with that. With that. And you notice I didn't miss any spaces on my typing test, uh, which shows that it does also have a very smooth and consistent typing touch, even for two-fingered typists like me. For someone who maintains their own typewriters, these are wonderful because they're so easy to maintain. You just flip them on their back. They're pretty much the same machine that they've been making for 50 years at this point, and that's uh, that's a great thing. Cons? Well, they decided to put plastic carriage release levers, and they can break after 50 years. So <laughs> just be aware of that. Even if both of them are broken off on the typewriter you're buying, it's not the end of the world. You just push up from below and uh, move the carriage over, and of course you can always use the carriage um, return arm to move the carriage, but it's just a little bit annoying, and it's, I think we all wish they had maintained the metal ones that they had in the 5 Series machines. Uh, small con, triple spacing, who are you kidding? I mean, who uses triple space? It's, it's worthless. Um, it's fun to have, I guess, but I don't see the point of it, and I definitely like the one, one and a half, two spacing uh, that they have uh, come out with just immediately afterwards. So, just a quick overview of the Sears Citation uh, typewriters, a citation and a citation two, and choplifter. So a lot of C's going on. Uh, and from C to signing C, uh, if anybody can guess what they think this choplifter chop lifter is, go ahead and comment down below before I reveal what I think. When I first saw this, I thought, well, that's a, a Comanche, a U.S. Army's uh, disastrous $7 billion helicopter that never was. <laughs> Why would they emblazon that? But I'm glad to realize it's not a Comanche because the Comanche had landing gear and this has uh, obviously got um, skids. So I think that this is a Eurocopter, a Eurocopter EC-135, possibly 145. So maybe someone was a student pilot or learning to fly this helicopter. Um, I don't know when they applied this sticker because that's a modern helicopter and this is a vintage typewriter. So that's also kind of a fun mystery to have on your typewriter. All in all, it's just kind of a testimony to the fun things you come across when you're collecting typewriters. Beautiful machines and then also the intersection of history and video gaming and everything else. At least that's what it is for us. And thanks for joining us. We're about to take flight. If we can find a uh, an old... Uh, 8-bit computer to run choplifter on. We're going to fly over that fence and start picking up those little hostages and blowing up those tanks. Thanks so much. Get to the chopper. Please like, subscribe, and share.